Ah, hello everybody! I know it has been a really, really long time, but I will give a few channel updates because we got a few oh, things to- Oh look everyone, it's Ender Luxio. Hey Ender, Ooh. when do we get uh, Lily's Revenge the sequel? Yeah. Soon, very yeah, soon. Wait, huh? so long. I, I know, I know. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, yeah. Hold on, hold on. Please, wait, please, wait, let wait, me explain. Wait, hold wait, on. Wait, okay. Okay, yes. I am working on the Lily's Revenge the sequel. Yes, I am working on more YouTube videos. I, it's just slow. I have a real life job. It's taken a lot out of me, and I got to balance that and Rec Room. Until Rec Room becomes pretty much my main time job, I got to balance both. So things will be a bit slow. But to note, Lily's Revenge: The Sequel is in development at the moment. I know I announced Lily's Revenge 2 all the way back in like last year, but that was the planning phase. That was getting all the lore stuff, the character stuff all the planning on how I want to do the quest out of the way. Now is on to the actual building, gadgetry, and room making. And I'm going to say, right now, it looks absolutely fantastic. It's going to be way better than the Lucifer Revenge 1 ever was. And I know you all are going to like it, but it's going to take some time, because it is a bigger game. More characters, more areas to go to, more endings, more lore. It's going to be a blast, and I know you all will absolutely love it when it comes out. But it will be a while, and I am still working on it, so it'll take its time. But definitely be ready for an awesome experience. Now, on to the YouTube side of things. I want to thank you all so much. This big much. <laughs> I keep accidentally doing that, but I'm just going to keep it this way. But uh, thank you all for getting me to 2K subscribers. I know that doesn't seem like a much compared to my like Rec Room subscribers, but it is absolutely a step in the right direction and I hope I can release more videos and I am planning on a few more videos I want to release on this channel that will hopefully give me more of a rec tuber kind of reputation because I'd like to actually be a video partner with rec room but I have to balance a real life job and all this stuff and it's a lot of things I have to do in such little time but I'm doing my best and I'm trying not to get myself burned out to where I take like a whole six month break so this video, as you can tell, is not about Lily's Revenge, kinda, nor is it about YouTube, kinda. It is Holotar Tutorials, kinda like I did with these buffoons over here. So, hopefully you all know how to know the... So, hopefully you all know how to use the Maker Pin, and if not, I will give you a very quick tutorial, as with most Rec Room tutorials will do, as a lot of people might not know how to use the Maker Pin, so I will help teach it a little bit, as well as show you how I did the Holotars in Lily's Revenge using Trigger Zone, State Machines, Holotars, and all that fun stuff. So, let's get to learning. Hiya! Ah, okay, so, funny enough, this is actually by fourth holotar video which is super funny but the first and second one i didn't like how i took the direction of things i felt like i didn't include enough to give a proper tutorial so i ended up scrapping those and the third one was actually really good actually very similar to this one problem is my recording didn't capture my microphone so all you hear is just the rec room stuff and not me but I got that fixed this time. Hopefully. Can y'all hear me? But anyways, let's get on to it. So this was actually from the third video. And this was demonstrating how I did the Holotars in Lily's Revenge. And all it simply was is a state machine, a trigger zone, and hooking up Holotars to it. Now there is a lot to know about this system. And I will go over the basic directions. Let me just grab this camera. So... How I do all of Lily's Revenge Holotars, as I've already said, is state machines. So we have a simple state machine right here, and it's hooked up to a few states already. And I will show how you all do that. And let me see if I can actually do this with my maker pin. Cool, I can. Okay. So, state machines are going to be in CV1 because there is no state machine CV2 unless someone built one. It's going to be in other chips, and you're going to scroll all the way to the right pretty much. And you're going to have two things. You're going to have the state machine and the state itself. So, for example, if we want to make a simple state machine of like a simple holotar, we'd make something like this. To where all we need to do is spawn in the state machine and then spawn in as many states as we need. Now, 
the default state is going to be the first one the room wants to land on when the room loads. And in order to make that, we take the state machine chip and we use the connect tool, if I can show it off here. The connect tool right here, click and drag on the state machine itself and click it to the state. You'll know if you did it if there's a little arc around it and now the state machine is glowing. That means that state is currently active. But now, what if we want to connect more? We do the same thing we did from dragging the state machine to this state, but instead of the state machine to the state, it's the state to the state. Connect all the states. The United States. A. Hey. All right. So we drag it from the active state to this inactive state, and now you'll notice this arrow. This arrow means that it's going to go from this state to this state. So we go from this state to this state, and we can do the same thing for these three. So now it goes from this, this to this. But what if you want to use states machines to make loops, which I know some of you might want to do for other purposes. You just connect this state to the original state, and now, as you can see, it's going to keep looping back and forth. Now what if you want to slow it down? What if you want specific numbers to spit out of this machine when you're shuffling through these? That is what the configure menu is good for. So when we have our configure menu, we just select on the state in question, and we have a few options. We have the minimum time in state, which shows how many seconds it's going to be in that state until it moves to the next one. And then we have the values, which these, whatever we put here, if it's currently in that state, those values will be on these red, green, and blue pins. The blue pin is, I think, showing if it's currently in, let me see, time in state. Okay, so this will show like how many seconds it's been in that state, and this will show if it's changing currently which is useful for some CV1 stuff. But now on to the, what is it? What is it called? Beef of the crop? Beef of the crop. Those are two exact opposite things. What is that saying? Something of the crop. Anyways, we're gonna move on to the main device I already made here. So you probably already noticed that this one is hooked up to the trigger zone and the arrow. So I can hook up my trigger zone here with the connect tool to this arrow and now it's stopped there. Why is it stopped? Because now it's waiting for this arrow to activate. And once this arrow activates, then it'll go spinning around. This is how I did kind of the trigger zone based holotar stuff. All I have to do, and I, I'm kind of afraid to hit this now because it's gonna activate all my other holotar stuff and I'd rather show that for later. So let's just move on to that, shall we? So currently we already have set up a system that kind of goes over the different holotar stuffs. And I did teach a lot of this in the first, or third video technically, but again, that didn't have any microphone recording, so boohoo. So, we have the starter state, which is going to be at zero seconds, I'm pretty sure. Yep, yep, I think. Or one second, I suppose. And then this will set off all these other states. Now, the default recording time, if you don't cancel the recording prematurely on Holotars, is 15 to 16 seconds. I usually always do 16 seconds because that usually covers the whole entire holotar and then it moves on to the other one. <laughs> so, I just have all these set to 16. Or, that one's 15, but I'll, I'll fix that real quick. And then this one should be 16 as well. Okay. So, I already hooked up the holotars. And how you hook up the holotars to this system, if I can grab the right one here. Or really just any one that will work. Okay. So you see, I hooked up the red pin to the green one. So this is on when the state is entered into, and it goes into the play chip. So this should play the holotar when it enters the state. And then when the state exits, it'll send an output on this blue pin, which will tell the holotar to stop. Which is why if you do 15 seconds, it might get cut off a little bit. But we'll see how this all runs. So all of these holotars are set up the exact same way all through this. And it's just going to go from this one to this one, 15 seconds passes, it goes to that one, 15 seconds pass, goes to that one, 15 seconds passed, and then this one, 15 seconds passed. And then it's going to go all the way back to the starter one, where it's going to wait on us to activate it again. And you might notice there's one over there, and that's because one of these holotars is actually a moving holotar, as in I moved in the actual space when I was recording. Now the fun thing with that is that, <laughs> so when you're recording the holotar, you actually go and walk around the room and go to a specific spot, like I did with Lily's Revenge. And I'll kind of show that right here. 
Alrighty, so if you want a system like this to where it hops from Holotar to Holotar, it's going to be the exact same thing as these state chips right here, but have the time set to 15 or 16. This is how long an average Holotar okay, recording so he's teaching lasts what I already if you don't taught. hit the done button beforehand. But to and note, see, and we just put a new state. Holotar, by the way. If you set it to 15 seconds, a little bit of the end might get cut off, so that's why sometimes I use 16 seconds. But anyways, yeah, now we're on the second Holotar. Woo! So now the other guy ain't speaking and I'm speaking. So what if we want to move? Alrighty, so now we're on the third one and we're gonna move. So we move in the rec room space, not in real life space. So I'm just gonna move maybe, let's go this way. So I'm gonna walk there while recording and it should stay right there. All right, so now to carry the illusion that I actually walked over here, I moved this holotar in the space to where I stopped moving on that holotar. So now it seems like I walked over here and now I'm talking about some random nonsense. So that's the complex holotar. Okay, so you saw he got cut off a little bit. I think that's because I was just rambling on. But, I mean, a video three ender has pretty much taught what I wanted to teach with the whole movement thing. He just said, basically, you move in the rec room space and wherever you land on that holotar, you put the brand new holotar right there. So it seems like you move to that spot. And... Of course, if you only want this to be triggered once, then just sever the connection between this. Also, if you do make a connection like this, just do the same thing again and it will get rid of it. So for example, if I don't want this connected to this one anymore, I want it just to be disconnected. I can just drag it over and then boom. Now it's disconnected. And now the state machine only interacts with these two. These are just null, pretty much. They're not hooked up to anything. They're not going to do anything, and they're just going to sit there and be sad. So we'll reconnect this so they won't be sad. Alrighty, so that is all you need to know about the Holotar stuff, pretty much. you got state machines, you have the trigger zones, which you can put pretty much in any tunnel, and all these Holotars will play. But anyways, that's all I need to talk about today. So thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all so much for 2K subscribers. I really appreciate all of you watching my videos and enjoying the content. As well, there is more videos to be released soon. Lily's Revenge the sequel is being worked on, and also, it is almost contest time. So we're about to enter another building contest, and we have something we're planning. We have a sort of brand new company of sorts we're going to be unveiling at this contest, and hopefully we'll get a good building group. And so far, it's just me and my friend in the building group, but we're getting a whole lot of other talented creators on board, and it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Now, to note, they're not really going to be working on Lily's Revenge the sequel, more or less just kind of my other room stuff or just other collaborative projects we work on together, because it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. So stay tuned for more videos. Stay tuned for more Ender Luxio rooms, Ender Luxio fun, and all that kind of stuff. But until then, I'll see you all later. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I promise not to take so long on the next video this time, okay? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. But anyways, you all have a wonderful rest of your day. See ya.